Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Three Days in the Pink Tower by E.V. Knight, and this is from Creature Publishing. I don't know how well you can see that. Creature Publishing. It's got that spine. Uh, now, this, this is going to be tough. Uh, so I'm going to start out by just telling you right off the bat, I gave this five out of five stars on Goodreads. It is a fantastic book. So this is on the back. You know what? I'm just going to do that. I'm going to read you the back cover copy. It says, Josie Claypool begins the summer before her senior year at a carnival where a fortune teller with milky white eyes gives her a foreboding tarot reading. She's spooked but nothing could prepare her for the following day when two strange men show up at her front door. Josie is kidnapped at gunpoint and brought to a pink cabin in the woods where she is held prisoner. In her darkest moment, the fortune teller appears and gives her a deck of tarot cards, which she must cast and interpret in a fight for her life. In this work of speculative auto-fiction, award-winning author E.V. Knight reclaims the narrative of her own past in an exploration of trauma, agency, and survival. So, um, autofiction is basically autobiographical fiction. Um, there is a, let's see what they call it, an author's note at the beginning of this book. Because the summer before her senior year, E.V. Knight was kidnapped and went through a horrible traumatic experience uh i don't i don't want to say too much about it i don't want to say i i don't want to downplay it <laughs> this is why this is a difficult review for me to do uh because i want to get across what this book is uh but i don't want to spoil things i so anyway Yes. Um, I will say that the, so, so auto, auto fiction, uh, Evie Knight in the author's note at the beginning does say that a lot of the dialogue in the story is directly taken from, again, I'm just going to use the words. Um, where is it? Uh, that is to say, a lot of the dialogue in this novella is verba verbatim to what was actually said, or at least what I reported the following day to have been said. So, there's that. Uh, this is a, an incredibly well-written story, and from simply a story standpoint, if we're looking at this, if we take away... See, I don't know if I should do this. If we take away the auto part and just look at it as a fictional story, it uh, what came to mind for me was was like the best of Jack Ketchum, which a lot of his stuff inspired by true stories. But it it had a Jack Ketchum vibe, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, if we're just looking at the story, it's so hard hitting knowing that it's auto fiction, that so many parts of this are true, absolutely true, but there is a fantastical element to it. As it said on the back cover copy, the, the old fortune teller lady comes to her, gives her these, uh, tarot cards and there, there are scenes with a dreamlike, almost hallucinatory at times, quality to them, where we have stepped out of reality. And this is the fiction part of the auto fiction. And the author does say in the note, this, this is about taking back her narrative, taking back her power. Um, and changing it, making the narrative what she wants it to be. 
not literally changing the past, obviously, but changing the story. <laughs> Whew. Yowza. Um, so, I suppose, I mean, the best thing for me to say is that, as and I believe I've already said this, it, it is an incredibly well-written story. The main character, the Josie Claypool, just want to double check, is, I think, a very typical 17-year-old girl. I've never been a 17-year-old girl, I can't say, but I've had a lot of sisters. I have six sisters. Um, <clears throat> so not only have I known all of them when they were 17-year-old girls, all their friends. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> getting a little dry in the throat. Uh, but but I do think that, that Josie Claypool is written as a, a typical-ish 17-year-old girl. I don't know how close the character of Josie Claypool is to Evie Knight as a 17-year-old girl. I don't know that, that that's a one-to-one -one kind of thing. Um, but she is definitely, uh, you know, she's young, she can be impulsive, she can be stupid, she can be, uh, but she knows that she's, like, there are things she does, and she's like, why am I doing this? It's probably not the smart thing to do, but she does it. Uh, she's also has that sort of, at times, the fearlessness, or maybe the I don't want to say naivete. I mean, back in the day, back in my time, when I was 17, when a number of my sisters were 17, I don't think we had the the same worries and concerns <clears throat> that people do now. And I don't know when uh, this... Well, actually, I do, because it has a date. It says 1992. I was 17 in the 80s. So, I can't say how people perceived the world in 92 as far as, like, we were the, I was of the generation where we could run all over the place all day long, as long as we were home for dinner, or in some cases, as long as we were home by dark, um, you know, our parents didn't, didn't care. And <clears throat> yes, there was stranger danger, but I don't think it was as prevalent or as, as, as in our heads as it is nowadays, but I don't know about 1992. So there, there are things that happen in the story. I feel like I'm rambling. There are things that happen in the story that when I was 17, I would have done basically the same thing. I wouldn't have had these, uh, it's hard to do this without giving anything away. And I think my sisters would have behaved the same way. I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've lost it for this video. Let's get back on track. Very well written. Very heartbreaking. Very harrowing. Very horrifying. Very uplifting. Very, for me, anger-inducing. <clears throat> um, because as much as I know that horrible people exist in the world it still makes me angry when horrible things happen i hate absolutely hate to see people being victimized and knowing that this is auto fiction just makes me really angry but it's still an amazing book um as i said five out of five stars Oh, is there anything else I should say? I don't know. I may have said too much. I may have muddled this up. Um, really trying to be respectful. Uh, but I, five out of five. I just, I can't recommend this enough. If you can stomach it. Three days in the pink tower. And, oh, and it, uh, well, it involves tarot. There's a lot of tarot stuff going on in here, which is cool, too. Uh, I know that Evie Knight is into tarot. I've had my tarot phases. I have a couple sets of tarot cards. 
So that's a little bonus if you're into that. Um, all right, that's I'm just out of control here. Three days in the Pink Tower, Evie Knight from Creature Publishing. Five out of five. Pick it up, read it, love it. It's a tough word to use for something this, oof, this tough. But there it is. Okay, I have no question for this video, so I'm just going to go straight into. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is EricSmith5757. That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.